Hi, welcome to our latest tutorial. In this tutorial that we've rather laughingly entitled The Dark Art of Mental Ray, and anyone who's ever tried to read the Mental Ray manual from cover to cover will know why we've called it this, we're going to attempt to demystify some of the Mental Ray functions that you might not normally use. Now, you've probably heard of render layers and render passes, and you may have used them for a few simple things, but I want to take this one stage further and do things like break up individual lights into their own render layers with their own render passes. I want to start to use custom passes. We'll cover the right way to do ambient occlusion, which is not just to multiply it over the whole image, but to take it over just the ambient light. We'll cover depth, but more than that, I want to show you how to get something useful out of Mental Ray's frame buffer without increasing your render time. So we'll cover all the standard render layers and render passes, and then we'll delve in to some techniques that can be used practically for any scene. So if we take a look at this, this is a rebuilt in Nuke, and we will be using Nuke in this tutorial to put things back together. This is a rebuilt pass contribution layer, which in essence is a fancy mask. So if we were to open up one of these now, and I want to change just the gloss paintwork on here, you can see I have all this level of control with the diffuse, indirect, specular, refraction, refraction, and whatnot. And if I were to just go to the diffuse, and let's say, um, turn the gain down on it, you can see here that I'm controlling just this gloss work without anything else. Now, you can do this with a simple mask, and indeed I'll be covering that, but this way still gives you all that control, lets us split our scene up into as many component parts as we'd like. Um, so that's one of the things we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at how to get that data out of Maya without increasing render time. We'll also be looking at doing um, a lighting pass. So if I grab one of these here, you can see I can dramatically alter the lighting. I can turn the light in the back room off. I can grab this one, which will be this light here, turn it off also. Okay, and you'll see this also gives me some rudimentary control over my shadows. I can grab this one, also turn it off, or indeed turn it up. So rather than spending hours re-rendering a scene to tweak the lighting, you can actually come in here and set this up in Nuke with the data we can get out of Mental Ray and make dramatic changes to our renders, basically in real time. So hopefully by the time this tutorial is finished, you'll have control over the different component parts of your scene, you'll have control over your lighting, you'll understand how to do um, render layers and render passes and what the difference between the two you'll understand pass contribution maps, maps and what to do with them and you'll understand a lot more about the mere material x because we will be delving quite heavily into this material and if i just pop open the hypershade i will just grab a mere material x and if you've never done this before, um, you can see under the mere material X, you have all these raw specs, spec levels, diffuse levels. I'll be showing you how to get this information out of Mental Ray and into a compositing app. This will give us even more control than the standard um, render passes. So instead of just having diffuse, we'll have a diffuse raw, a diffuse level. These can then be multiplied together to give us an even greater degree of control than we already have here. So I'll be showing you how to get all that information out of Maya, how to put it back together again. So really, if you've got to that point in your rendering when it's pretty good, but you're spending a lot of time re-rendering different materials, tweaking lighting, you know, and if you're using expensive operations like Final Gather or Radiance Particles, uh, any sort of GI really, you'll know yourself that this the render times can be quite long. So being able to get that information out of Maya, get it into a post-processing app, or whether it be Nuke, After Effects, um, is an essential part of Maya once you reach a certain level. So if you think you're ready to, um, to sort of delve into behind Mental Ray, what's happening in the background, um, this might be the tutorial for you. Okay, thank you for listening to me, and hopefully I'll see you in the first part. Cheers.